Hello? Hello? Is anybody there? Am I connected? Hey Rod, how are you? Thanks for confirmation. All right. Um, okay. How are you all doing? I guess fine, right? <laughs> I can't hear you guys, so <laughs> I'll just guess. Um, is my sound clear? Somebody was complaining the other day that it was a disturbance or something. Clear. Okay, good. All right, let's get started. Um, I just want to talk about uh, this uh, small little pattern because there are some new guys, new people. Oops. My other computer got knocked out from my internet connection. I just hear that. Am I still connected? Yes, okay. Um, one of these broker, which one? Which one got disconnected? Uh, MetaTrader, huh? All right. Well, it's got connected again. I don't know why they do these things. By the way, anybody watching the um, USDX? It's coming down nicely, huh? Hey, Bella, how are you? I thought you were not uh, been able to attend. <laughs> Good that you came. Okay. Um, USDX, uh, well, I don't want to talk about it, but I'm just saying that, you know, a USDX chart, um, if uh, if you guys remember, <laughs> okay, good. Uh, if you um, if you guys remember that, you know, it was hitting the trend line and I said, well, it's probably going to, you know, come, you know, come down from there. It did. And for the first time after a long time, I think from February 1st, uh, till now, it was giving us on a four-hour chart, it was giving us nice, nice uh, bullish uh, setups our magic wave setups and this is the first time it gave us a bearish setup four hour chart if you uh, take a look you'll see okay nice bearish setup and then it's drop, you know start dropping so but but the market is very very uh, in chaotic mode right now uh, because of the you probably you all know uh, well anybody want to know why what's happening out there any big news anybody watching um, fundamentals from the side We uh, recently had a, a FOMC and, um, yeah, I want to know, and I have not been. All right, here you go, Adam. You know, Cyprus. <laughs> okay, Greece is over. Now we are up to Cyprus now. <laughs> so Cyprus is, uh, you know, it's uh, on the verge of uh, defaulting and everybody is trying to, they are trying to save themselves, everybody else, Eurozone, they're, you know. All the emergency meetings are going on and this and that, and that is killing the euro. Even though USDX is weakening, euro also weakening big time. Um, on top of that, today, <laughs> it, it is like uh, I was reading on a website, and uh, it was a very nice quote there. It says that, man, S&P just kicked the man which was already down. <laughs> so what S&P did is they downgraded Cyprus today. Okay, so we already had so much problems, so many things going on, bad news, bad things uh, about Cyprus, uh, which was weighing on Euro. On top of that, today S&P downgraded it from C, I guess, positive to C negative something. And now uh, it is ruining my plans. So <laughs> anyway, uh, just watch it and, um, uh, you know, have fun. Um, I'm watching it very closely. Uh, I send the, the chart uh, and Euro Yen. We're going to talk about Euro Yen and the Gertle. All right, some new people here requesting that please uh, show us how to measure, uh, you know, these patterns and uh, they like the, the pattern. It was a nice one. Um, we usually have a lot of them, always, right? But uh, this one worked out very nicely. So we're going to show, uh, I'm going to show how to measure that and uh, uh, what are the, uh, you know, the Gertle and the bad pattern. Uh, the little difference uh, it's very important to know and uh, for some of you this stuff maybe it's ABC of the harmonic trading so you know excuse me 
uh, sorry about that, but some new people need to learn, so I'm going <laughs> to, you know, uh, do this ABC. And uh, to me, it's a very nice, uh, you know, it's going to be a revision, all right? So let's get started. Uh, this is, I'm going to, uh, right now, this is in front of me. I've made a lot of my own charts, as you know, and uh, different scenario, different ways to trade these patterns. This is bearish girdler. Now, if you go in the market and, and if you go on a, a website and then pull out a girdler pattern, you will probably see the same picture, but they strictly tell you that do not trade until you see Gertle is complete at 78.6, right? That's what they tell you. Uh, if it doesn't touch that line, don't even trade. That, come on, you know, we are here to make money and the market is not going to, you know, move according to our uh, nice uh, pictures and diagrams and, you know, uh, art uh, work, uh, market moves, that's it, you know, uh, basically it's fundamental. And these are just that, you know, like a guidelines, okay? Most of the time, that's what's happened, uh, harmonically, okay? Nature-wise, whatever you can say. So we pinpoint those things and we just try to, you know, take advantage as much as possible. So my take is like I like to trade, uh, you all know by now that I love to trade from point C to D. That's my main thing in this pattern. Uh, I would trade from D, it depends. Why it depends, I'll explain you a little, uh, little, uh, little bit later. But uh, point C is very strong because that has to happen most of the time. Uh, if not, then you already have uh, another trade coming in. Like if C point, it crosses, it goes dip below point A, you showed from there to go A, B is equal to C, D kind of thing. 100%, 127%, one point six, like this one right here. So let me, I might as well show you. Oh, come on, man. Me and my computer. Uh, this one, right? So if it's not C point, it, if it doesn't come down here to make a girdle and it continue going up, that it will most likely be making it's like capital A, B, and then C, and then D would be like maybe 100% or 127, 1.618. Well, again, either up and down, right? We can't go left or right. So either way, just if you pay attention and if you learn these things, doesn't matter where it's going. You will find out and then you will you know, just follow it, simply. Okay, so let's go back to that. Um, okay, what did I do? I closed something else. Okay, all right, we were on this one, right, bearish girdle. So, um, yeah, we had, uh, very, okay, let's, let's go live and see uh, Major. I want to sh uh, show these uh, new people here how to measure. This one uh, look like, um, this is the chart that I sent out, right? Oh, not this one. Okay, this one, right? Okay, so this is how you have um, this C point, and um, I start trading from here, several entries, but I just showed one, but, you know, usually I go on a one minute, and then one, one of those, you know, one or two uh, tra entries, I uh, leave it open, and, uh, you know, 0 0.786 straight, you know, was the target. Uh, but in the meantime, you know, on a one-minute chart, if it dips a little bit, then you, you, you know, another order you hit, and then like 10, 15, 20 points, you, know, you get out. Then again, you know, that happens. You dip, you know, one-minute chart, you can play that. You got, knowing that you're going from point C to D, uh, you can do a lot of things. As soon as uh, this trend line breaks from X, connecting X to B, all right, and then that's like a sort of a confirmation going towards D. And then from there... Uh, I did not set out the chart that the girdle is complete and go short. I will tell you the reason why. I'm not expecting that, even though it was a trade, but it was like a risky trade for me. All right, so uh, this is a chart, and this is the Fibonacci. So let's go on a live chart. and um, uh, Bella, are you there? All right, good. All right, so you've been asking me for this, right? 
All right. So open your chart. This is a one hour chart. Let's go one by one, step by step. Just follow me, right? So you know this on the left hand side, you know this retracement tool. Just take that and, uh, well, let me mark first for you. So then you know what exactly it is. This is the length we're going to take from top to this bottom here. So let's go uh, start marking. It's like this is A. You know, any big move, especially when you have a daily chart in, in your site. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, I send out the daily chart, by the way, that we are going up for the fifth wave. And that's what, that's what it is. So this is A. This is B. What the? Man. All right. Sorry about it. Forgot about X. Okay. Um, anybody else, you know, I just, um, if you don't know, just uh, keep doing as I'm doing so that you will have a good practice. You know, how you make these. And always remember these, uh, this picture. Okay. By the way, this picture and this is the, uh, the, the writing that I, uh, you see here. I made it yesterday. Uh, bad pattern, we have three trades in place, but the Gurtley have only two, two trades. I recommend only two trades, not the middle one. The middle one in the bad is uh, you trade uh, at a break of point B, right? But uh, in case of Gurtley, we don't do that because the distance between point B and D is not much. So there is risk involved uh, and no, uh, not many, not much reward. So risk reward is very, uh, I don't like it. So it's not much. Bad is, you know, 50% pullback and then D point is 88.6. So you have a good diff you know, uh, difference between those two points. All right. So keep um, watching this or you should have it, all of you. Uh, we see something similar, right? And we start marking it. We, as, you know, as usual, we draw, start drawing trend lines, channels, and uh, when you see these things, you just keep drawing. You know, uh, mark those points and see what happens. And uh, are they really uh, other points? And uh, so when you know you have you see it's a lot of wobbling here, it's a pullback and pullback, and you know it looks like something like this, right? Okay, so you say, okay, hmm, this is something that. Um, I pay attention to and let's mark this thing and see what happens. <clears throat> <There you go. coughs> Which one, Bella? This is I send out um, on the 19th or 20th. Didn't you trade it? Excuse me, by the way, uh, somebody is asking that I just made it. Yeah, this one I'm, I'm, I'm marking in front of you right now. But this is a chart that I sent out. This one. You didn't get it, Bella? Okay, but you didn't trade it, I guess, right? I wrote it down. 23.6 20, line is holding so far. Girdley in the making. Okay. All right. It's okay. Plenty of uh, things coming in. Uh, in fact, the same pattern was in Euro Yen and Aussie Yen as well. Aussie Yen was nice. Um, Anyway, uh, so, uh, yes, this one I'm just making. That one was old. It already played out. Uh, X, A, B, C. So when I say, okay, now pull the uh, fib, this tool right here, and you always pull the, the Fibonacci. Is uh, um, Do I need to go in detail to what Fibonacci is? Anybody? Or just uh, everybody knows what the Fibonacci is? Okay, good. Anybody else? All right, so you all know what the the tool is all about, and you don't need to uh, go in the back, you know, in the history who Fibonacci was, and <laughs> yeah, who care about that, right? We need to make money with that. Okay, now so pull the trip always from X to A, whatever the the length you're taking. Let's say if you want to measure this pullback, then you pull from bottom to top this length to see how much price pull back after the move. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, any okay. Um, you can you can start measuring any points or anything, any length. Like from this one, you can just measure to see it, it did. Okay, this was dropping, right? So you can uh, you always pull a fib from here to here and see what's happening, where the hack is gonna stop and how far it's gonna drop. Okay, fifty percent broke, sixty one broke, seventy eight broke. Or that you know, it's everything is breaking, breaking, breaking. So you just you know hold on to it either or, or, or you probably have you know short from the top um, you know this is a, a the trend line touch I didn't have that trade uh, I but um, uh, this one let's say especially when you see something like this pattern here it's like you have a length then you have another pullback around either 50 percent or 61.8 percent and then price comes around this area so you have, let's say, this move, this move, and this move. Look for this pattern. Three moves. Again, let me show you here. This, this. Okay. If you scan like one hour, four hour daily charts here, there, different places, uh, different pairs, you will find them. You will find these. You know, or in the making, maybe you just have this dip and that price going up, and start wobbling here and it's trying to come down. Watch for uh, creating a point C. The, let's see if the price creates a point C. If the point doesn't go, if this drop doesn't go below this A point, then it is a point C. Usually, I, I told you, I mean, in my webinars, you can see that I emphasize this line here, this number, 23.6, a lot. And uh, in this one, you know, simply that's what happens, and that's why I wrote it down here, 23.6 line was holding. So let's draw this FIP from the top to the bottom X to A and let's see first that how much was this the first pullback and it was exactly 61.8 hit and then bearish engulfing candle was created was clear rejection from there then came down went up to test it again and got rejected again start coming down here and here you can see it touches the 23.6 line one time and then every time it comes close been bought every time come close been bought again like three four candles then went up a little bit came down a little bit and this is you know it's like a slow time consolidation time anyway so that was a nice nice uh, uh, you know time wise and the point wise and the price wise was a nice <coughs> excuse me uh, C area was uh, big, you may be experienced network connection difficulties, man. All right, uh, am I still connected? I hear so, a message saying that I may have a network connection problem. Loud and clear. Okay, good. Man, these computers, you know, I confuse you. Okay, so the first pullback, the condition on a girdle here, again, we go back here to see this, that this is a bearish girdle, it would be a picture of that, and the first pullback at point B must be 61.8% of XA. So you draw from here to here and see where the point B was stopped or created, and we have... Uh, it should be 61.8, must be 61.8, and we have it at 61.8. So that was a nice uh, point B by the book. Then we drop here, and my C point, I don't care about what other people are talking about, or even uh, who, who created it, Scott Courtney or whatever, you know, it's like, uh, he's a nice guy, uh, very educated. So um, uh, he... Um, has like at, and at the point C could be anywhere between 38% and 88%. But where? It's a long range, right? You know, what to look for? There's got to be something. So what I found out is that this 90% of the time, point C would be around 23% of the same FIB. You don't have to draw again. From XA, you draw the FIB from X to A. Then you have different lines, right? 11.4, then 23.6, then 38, then 50, then 61, then 78, then 707, and 88.6 for the bat, and then 100%. So the same FIB 
Point B would be 61%, 61.8%. Then my C, ideally, if I have a stop at around 23.6% line, that would be ideal C point. Very, very perfect C point. And that is uh, very strong. And uh, most of the time, more than 95% of the time, it will go up and touch 78.6% line. That's why, if you remember, I don't have uh, written on the chart, but I think when I set out the chart, I wrote down in the message that uh, the first target will be 78.6%. Uh, and it went up, and uh, nice and clean, we hit 78.6%. That usually happens, you know. It's nothing, you know, it's rocket science over there. That's what the GERD is all about. So now, once the GERD is finished, then here comes the conventional way to trade it, which I did not send the chart out because, I mean, I taught it so many times already, and all of you, uh, except the new people, all of the old, uh, <laughs> my colleagues and traders and subscribers uh, know that, uh, uh, at, at, uh, you know, once the, the guard is finished, you will have a reaction to it. Uh, and our first target is the trend line connecting A, to C, point A to point C. Always draw that. When Once you have a C point in place and price start going up and you start going long with it, trading with it, then just draw the trend line immediately, even before it is finished there. Okay. Now, once you have it finished, then it, there is a nice trend line. But knowing that what's happening in Cyprus and this and that, I'm being very, very careful now nowadays. Uh, uh, well, you know, who am I? I mean, I, even the, you know, presidents of the countries don't know what they're doing or what they're supposed to do now. <laughs> so forget about me and, you, you know, all the traders. They're all confused. A big confusion out there. And no one knows what's going to happen in coming days. Okay. Uh, very few times I saw that uh, euro is going down as well as um, USD going down too, you know. So what the, you know. What do you do? They're both going down. It's very confusing and chaotic situation right now. So rather just sit down on the sideline and watch unless you have a solid, solid. Um... Okay, now, um, if you guys remember, and uh, I know Bala, you, uh, 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 you asked me a couple of times, the, what is uh, the failed girl play? I, I mentioned this um, uh, uh, term, failed girl play. Okay. Fairy Girdle is what? Fairy Girdle is which stops, it has a reaction at 78.6%, but it will stop at, okay, um, Bella, you, uh, Bella is saying that that does not happen. So uh, what do you mean Bella does not happen? In this case right here, right now, that is happening, by the way. What is the Fairy Girdle? You gotta understand that the fail girdle is. Let me explain to you. I mean, I don't know if it is not. It's, it's gonna be failed or not. We are at the station right now. Nothing happens from there. It goes the other way. Yeah, it goes the other way. Right, that's fine. But it need the girdle need to go. Okay, let me show you the um, picture that will make it clear. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Here. Okay, now you see here, okay, not even this one. Let me show you the other one. It's more uh, understandable what I'm trying to. Then I'll show you this one. Okay, this one. Okay, this is Elliott wave and harmonic pattern where usually these patterns shows up. So you can see it's one, two, three, four, five, and then you have, Correction comes in, right? A, B, C in Elliott wave term. And this is the correction. And then you have A, B creating this girdle for the point C. And if you connect this, these two points, A and C, all right, of this girdle, then the price comes down here, bounce a little bit. It's like a small one and two then you're going to have a 
3 and then 4, 5 will finish the wave C to the downside around 61% of this whole move up. Big move, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you see, once you have in the background, if you can count 5 waves on the top, and you consider this A and this B instead of 1 and 2, and 3, 4, 5 to the downside, or even A, B, and then C to the downside. Then it's a different story. Then what's going to happen? This is what's going to happen. Draw a trend line A to C. Connecting A to C, the price at point D got less complete, and the reaction happens. What is the reaction? It will go the other way and start dropping and hit this trend line. This is our always is the first target. Second is target. You know that the point C then third target is point A, and then D is 127, 1.618, and so on and so forth. Okay, so we met our first target to the downside. Gertle was played out, and it came down and hit the triangle. I mean, what am I saying? Triangle, trend line, right? And bouncing a little bit now, just like this diagram. But will it drop? That is the question. Will it drop and break the trend line? If it breaks this trend line and go, then you can say that, yes, the Gertle was good and it played out. But if it bounces from the trend line and start going up again and take out the point D, it's a failed Gertle. It was a Gertle, only dip a little bit down to the trend line and then going up. The good Gertle will take you down all the way to point C. See, I mean the wave C, right around here, wave 2. We'll finish here. This would be A, B, and C. Um, is uh, If anything uh, uh, clear now? Or should I explain more? Let me, let me show you the other picture too. What happened on the other picture? This is one of those, right? Now, the five wave going up, the advance, how that happens is in this manner. Okay, you, it's one, two, three, four, five. So wave one and two makes a girt lay or a bat before going up. Then wave three, and it, it it also has small, you know, like a small girt lay here, the big wave, and then, you know, butterfly here, ending wave three. I didn't make that because no space. So usually wave four and five get together and makes a butterfly, which I call ending butterfly. It's a, a reversal pattern, ending butterfly, ending crab. <coughs> because it ends the move. Gertley or bad starts the move. Right? Now, it's it very important that way is, that is happening. In this case, you can see here that after the wave 5 finish here, then you have correction A, B, C. But what if here you have a wave 3 correction, like this one? Let's say if this thing, this point is only wave 3, like this one. So you have, let's say this one is A, I mean X, this is A, this is B, this is C, and now it goes around here somewhere, make a D, dip a little bit, but it's going to go up, right? If you are only a wave 3, and then you wave 4, and then you're starting wave 5 actually. Am I right? Is it clear? Anybody? Okay, now let me show you pound yen daily chart to determine that before the Gertle, at this point, was was it wave 5 or wave 3? If it is wave 3, let's say this one is wave 3, then you're going to have an ending butterfly coming up. And if what, if it was wave 5, then you this Gertle would be like A, B, and then C goes to the downside. Let me check what's happening on the other computer just now. Hold on just a minute. Uh, um, the, the chart that I sent out in the morning uh, about a Euro USD, it's still hanging there. It's hanging. 
and ha having a very diff what the oh man but <laughs> <laughs> okay um if you can see is that um dad uh, um head and shoulder inverse head and shoulder at the end of the move uh very strong number you're a usd um 2873 it's holding and um, the right the right shoulder is just stopping again for the fourth time uh equal to the left shoulder and uh, the pressure is too much to the downside. Cypress condition and then today downgrading again. So it may break. It's easy. Very easy. But we're going to watch it very closely. Like I said, this is a very, very difficult time as far as the trading is concerned. Be very, very careful. Anything can happen. 50, 100 points, boom, goes up, then comes down. Any news comes in. Today they have an emergency meeting that ended already. Uh, I don't know what happened. So, you know, see, it's, things happening. Uh, one president called the other one, boom, 50 pips up. The other one said, you know, uh, you know, somebody laughed, boom, <laughs> it goes down 50. It's a chaotic movement right now, so be very careful. Anyway, so um, pound, what I was going to watch is um, the pound yen, pound yen, pound yen. No, 15 minute chart, let me see what's happening on a five. Okay, we stopped here, right? Now, if you can, if you notice that it came down to the trend line and is having a hard time bouncing, but not breaking and going down either. So we are kind of, you know, at the station right now, and uh, it is um, uh, no man's land. Anything can happen. It can bounce and it can go down. Okay, so if it bounces, what would be the scenario? I'll tell you right now. And um, let's go back and watch this daily chart of pound yen that I sent out a couple of days ago, a week ago. This is the one, right? This was March the 7th and showing this Elliott Wave channel, which we already, you know, had a, a webinar. And uh, we know that it, how it travels between the channels and, the, you know, um, the law of uh, alternation. That if the wave two is side wave, then you will have a sharp decline in wave four. And if the the wave two is zigzag sharp decline, then you will have a triangle in wave four. But here you have a wave two very side wave movement, flat correction. Then this one might be a fourth wave, a sharp decline, and then uh, price went inside the way uh, the channel, and the next one was. This one, right? So it, it went inside the channel nice and clean. And uh, I said, well, if these are the conditions, one, two, three, four, then we may go up there for the wave five. But uh, we're not going to go in a straight line, maybe, you know, like this one, wave three. But wave three is always big and powerful. So wave five will have five small waves in it. One, two, three, four, five. <coughs> Excuse me. So what's happening here on our daily chart? So now uh, I, I just show you that, you know, in the back of my mind and, you know, I sh uh, even uh, show you guys that it is going up for the wave five. Okay, so this is what's happening. If this is the current chart. It's so one, two, then three. And if this is the four, or maybe this is the fourth is not complete. This may be um, A, B, and then C come down, right? Anything... It's possible, but this is for now. That's what we have. We have the channel in place. We have the channel bounce one, two, three, four days hitting the channel line and bouncing, not being able to break it. Okay, right here after getting inside. So it's a very strong uh, scenario that we might go continue go up. So that's why I said that um, when I saw this girdle, and uh, that girdle that we're talking about is right around here somewhere, by the way. <laughs> Can't even see it, right? Uh, it's a daily chart. Uh, you can't understand a thing. But here you can see that we are, if that's what it is, that we are going up, and I'm expecting at least to go as high as the last three third wave. So if we are, we finish the wave three, and then wave four, and then this 
this daily chart need to make a wave five. So it's going up, right? So it's not the end of uh, wave five. It's at the end of wave three. And then um, let me go back here again. Okay. So this was uh, the end of uh, wave actually three, we can say. And then a little drop here. And then let's say if that was a wave four. Hold on just a minute, guys. Hold on just a minute. Okay. All right. So that's what I was talking about. <coughs> So see that um, I'm not, uh, so the way I'm looking at it is like it was only the wave three, not wave five. And we might be going up and taking out this high, right? So in that scenario, the girdley will be a failed girdley and not able to break this trend line, point connecting point A to C. It will hold above it and go. But what would be the scenario? What's going to be making? What's happening? And um, I have the chart made, but on the other chart, other computer. Uh, how do I get it? Forget it. I'll make it here. Now, let's say the wave five. Wave five also will have five small wave in it. One, two, three, four, five. Right. So let me count and uh, and, and mark, and then you probably understand what I'm talking about. And I'll show you the chart too. Uh, a, f a picture, a figure. Let's say it's go with the yellow. Okay, let's say this was the way at the end of wave three, and then we have after finishing wave four, uh, we're going up for the wave five. Cypress condition can throw everything out, but you know, we have to count or do something, right? On our part. If this is wave one and two, and then this will be the start of wave three, but wave three also have small. Partial subwaves, one, two, three, four, five, and we will mark that as a Roman count. We have one, one, two, and then one, two, three, four, five to the upside, if we're not going to the downside. Whoops. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a bad throat. Again, getting old. Uh, okay, so if this is one two and one two, then we might be having a wave three of this one two three and then four and then five. That will finish wave three of this count, and then we will have a dip for wave four, and then wave five. God knows where we will end up. So, if this is one two one two, then we will this trend line will definitely hold. And we will go up here somewhere for wave three. And that will make us Gertle a failed Gertle. Uh. On some pair, okay. All right. <clears throat> uh, Adam uh, is asking that why um, the some trend lines are parallel to each other and some are not on some pairs. So, um, in our um, other, um, I don't know which one, but I can find out and I'll show you too. Uh, remember the you know when I talk about that we we trade with three different methods, and um, the first method involved three things, and this is what 
you know, uh, uh, well, right now I'm mixing everything else, but the first method, let me explain to you what it is. It's, it's, it has three different things. It has trend line, channels, and support and resistance. Horizontal, support, and resistance. So now, trend lines are single lines connecting two points to find out a third point. What happened here? I'm disconnected or something. Um, you understand what I'm saying? Trend lines are only uh, like trend lines connecting one or two points. Um, my program's not responding. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, uh, I'm done with this uh, program anyway. So this is what's happening. Internet connection with this broker uh, on my other computer is keep getting disconnected too. I can hear that. That's why I asked you guys, you know, <laughs> before. Uh, but anyway, let me show you this uh, picture. I'm done with the picture anyway. So uh, let me explain what was I was explaining. Oh, okay. Uh, trend lines. All right. So like this one, Adam. This one. Let's say this. You connect these two lines, and that's it. This is a you know simple trend line. But those parallel lines are the channels. Like I said, again, parallel lines. You create channel. If I take this parallel line, what happened to this program? Man, let me close it down and see if I can reopen it quickly. Just frozen on me or disconnected. Anyway, so channels you create um, uh, with the. Uh, I'll 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 find out that uh, webinar. Then I'll send it to you. And um, uh, you see the channels are the parallel line. Always uh, the price moves within the channels. And we have several, um, already several uh, webinars that I explain um, how the channels are. And especially the Elliott Wave. Let me show you if I uh, can um, show you right here that if I have it. And I'm sure I should have it somewhere. Uh, too much garbage. I mean, even I get lost in my computer where things are. I don't know. Uh, this, this is a this is a webinar that I did uh, like this one. The picture. Okay, and this is a there is a webinar on that. Uh, if you go on a YouTube and find out, and if I find out, I'll send it to you. Okay, like see this is zero point, and then you know wave one, and then wave two. So how you uh, find out a wave three? Uh, you create a channel. You connect these two points. And then take a parallel of it and then place it on wave one. Like here, so wave three usually breaks the channels, upper TL and goes, uh, okay, maybe here. You see this pic these pictures? You should have these pictures, man. I, I send it to everyone. Anyway, look at this one, okay? It says here, after the completion of wave one and wave two, connect the starting point of wave one and the end point of wave two. Then take a parallel line and place it at the point at the end of wave one to create a channel and your target of point three. Right, okay. Let's go. Uh, hold on, guys. Hold on just a minute. Okay. Hello. Okay. So um, this is how uh, it is. If you don't have it, then I'll send it to you. Okay. But uh, the trend lines are simply the trend lines. My broker, uh, it got off. So here, see, these are these are not trend lines. See, I uh, trend line. First of all, you don't uh, draw the trend line on the top, right? But to make the channel, that's what you do. I connect it here, the wave one, and the end of wave three, and then place it at the wave at the end of wave two. To get this um, wave four target, and the price comes and touch the wave four. 
Yeah, right, right, right. So, yeah, some, you know, Adam probably have a little difficulty. So I'm going to, I'm going to send it to you. I'm going to find out that whole webinar on this channeling. And uh, remember, just the trend line is just the trend line connecting two points, and then the price will come back and touches that. <coughs> but if you take that trend line and place it on the last high, then you create a channel. Those two parallel lines are channel now, and the price goes up and hit the channel line, then comes back down at the first trend line, touches the trend line again. So this is how it keeps going, you know, ping pong, by, you know, back and forth until it just breaks one side and goes all the way. Like in case of Gurdle, what I'm expecting is <coughs> if it's a good Gurdle, it should break the trend line and drop all the way down. But if it's going to be a fail Gurdle, if it goes up, which I'm expecting in the pound yen to go up because we know that uh, the daily chart showing us that we are going for the fifth wave. Okay, um, guys, I don't know what's happening, but my throat is really hurting now, and it's probably like uh, 45 minutes already. I hope I give you something today. Um, uh, if not, again, I'll do it tomorrow. <coughs> and uh, um, uh, and uh, and any in any of you uh, need that uh, webinar about the channel and trend line, um, Adam, I'll give you definitely. But if uh, anybody else, then I'll, I'll send it to you. But pay attention to these uh, charts. And if you want, uh, anybody need a, a, a chart for like a pound yen update, I'll do the update anyway as soon as I see it tonight. Because now, right now, it's uh, no time to trade. But as soon as we start doing something, uh, any news comes out and it looks like it's, it's bouncing from that trend line connecting A and C. So uh, just uh, watch that one and uh, we will take it from there tonight. Hopefully we will have a long setup. <coughs> and also Euro USD, watch that inverse head and shoulder on a four hour chart. Okay. <coughs> I gotta go drink something. <coughs> uh, okay. So uh, I got to run. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. A uh, little, you know, maybe, you know, 10 minutes. But uh, I hope uh, I, I deliver something. So just pay attention to that. I'll keep doing again and again. And we follow that. And I want to show you the Aussie N also making a very nice setup. Uh, uh, but uh, hopefully I'll do it tomorrow. Another, you know, fast one. Okay. And I'm, and, and from now on, I'm going to do one webinar on a 6 hour, uh, 6 p.m. And the next one, probably 12, because some people are saying 6, some 12, so I'm confused. So i got to go both ways, right? One here, one there. <laughs> okay? So, Adam, don't worry, man. I'll send you that webinar and uh, the charts and everything. Okay? So uh, nice talking to you guys again, and uh, soon uh, we will do it again. Okay? Thank you very much for jo <coughs> man. Join, uh, joining me. And Jamie, I will uh, send you uh, the update on that USD CAD. Okay, please, Jamie, uh, send me um, an email reminding me. Okay, and I'll do it uh, in maybe a couple hours. All right. Uh, that is a very, that's a weekly chart, so we you know it's coming down. It's coming down. I'm gonna do the uh, uh, an update. Okay, thank you, thank you very much for you guys. Ah, man, my throat hurts today. <laughs>